the big stories of the week. And of course, uh, joined by political analyst par excellence, Mark Bichachi. <laughs> What does Paul Axel I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the power being excellent <laughs> yes. in English, that would sort of be. Karibu sana, Bona Mark, of course. Welcome to the first show, New Studio. Yeah, you guys clean up nice. Yes. It looks good. Yeah. It looks good. I like Fantastic it. Fantastic stuff. Like That's why when you say this is what is on, it's exactly what you need. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I think the color scheme works. I okay. like the, the, the bar behind me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's attention to detail. Yes. It was worth the wait. And that's one thing uh, Mark <laughs> definitely does have indeed. When it comes to attention to detail, whether it's politics or anything, if you've ever mm. spoken to Mark, you do know it. The devil for him is always <laughs> in the details. Uh, Mark, let's jump right into the dailies right here. Mm -hmm. Of course, front page of uh, the PD, uh, Defy Uhuru Raila at own Peril Sonko tells Ruto right there. Mm -hmm. uh, this, of course, was a subject of a conversation had yesterday on our show, Punchline yes. with Anki Guta. Governor advising DP to support President uh, Handshake Building Bridges initiatives to secure his 2022 ambition. How likely is uh, the DP even uh, to take such advice uh, as, uh, as of now we can see battle lines being drawn yes. deep in the sand? Yes. Mm -hmm. there, there, are two, there are really two ways uh, to look at it. Now, strategically speaking in this country, you make a name for yourself for two reasons. Number one, uh, being very close to power and playing nice by the game. Right. Or being absolutely defiant and being on the other side of, of the tracks. Now, who is William Ruto will answer the question. William Ruto is a child of Daniel Toroiti Charap Moy. Right. He's a child of Raila Amolo Odinga, and he is therefore a hybrid of the two. So how has Raila Odinga fashioned his career? Right. In 1992, going towards 1997, Raila Odinga defied his father, defied Ford Kenya, and did the whole Tinga movement and moved away from it. Raila Odinga also knew to make a collaboration between himself and Daniel Toretich Arab Moy and survived for two years. And then he flipped the bud on Daniel Toroiti Charap Moy to make his own career into the Rainbow Coalition in 2002. Mm -hmm. And then he defies Kibaki in 2005 to form ODM. So he, he, the, the, Ruto is a student of both schools of thought. Now here's my prediction. Number one, defying BBI is a risky strategy. Mm -hmm. And if you notice what uh, the deputy president has done, he's very careful. He's careful to ensure that when he's speaking about BBI, he goes, you know what, let's focus on development. Let's see whether we can merge these documents. So he's playing it safe. Right. The guys who are always drawing the line in the sand are his lieutenants. Right. And, and, and it's, it's a careful strategy of um, both in and out at the same time. Schrodinger's right. cut. Right. He's alive and dead to BBI <laughs> at the same time. And we'll let uh, uh, Mr. Mulwa <laughs> join us. Good morning, Bonaben Mulwa. Good morning. Karibu sana. Asante. Uh, welcome to the new studio, as you oh, can yeah, see. absolutely. Yes. Uh, the last time we were here is quite a while ago. Yes. Uh, uh, well, it's a beautiful place. This is indeed the inaugural show, and Karim Busana for joining us. Asante. Ben Mula, governance expert. Yes. And uh, you <coughs> just joined us as Mark was uh, going into the, the headline of the day, as far as the people daily is concerned. Mm -hmm. With the advice uh, Nairobi governor is giving the DP yes. to, you know, back the handshake, back uh, the BBI initiative. Absolutely. And, you know, toe the line, so absolutely. to speak. Yes. Um, right now, we're asking, whose survival is this when the statement comes like that? Because he says that's the only way the DP's presidential 22 ambitions remain alive. Uh -huh. Is that the DP he's uh, looking out for or is this statement actually supposed to guard the governor himself? No, 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 no. In my view, it is, it is basic. It is a basic common standard. Um, the deputy president remains the principal assistant of the president. Right. That is the mandate and that is the definition of his role under the constitution. Mm -hmm. Anything else is a creation of his own imagination. I remember a time actually when he was displaying some arrogance, uh, insisting that he's the first deputy president of Kenya. Yes, the title is the first one, but the mandate is very clear in the constitution. So when he begins to appear to be uh, working against what his boss wants, when he begins to appear to be working against the dictates of what is expected of his office, then definitely he's on his own and he cannot survive. Right. That strategy cannot survive. It mm -hmm. has never worked anywhere in the world. And unfortunately, except the f untidy scenario we are seeing playing out like in Kiambu, whereby the deputy and the governor are always at war, mm -hmm. uh, it has never worked for anybody. Right. Uh, actually, Governor Sonko is very categorical. Uh, the deputy president just needs to focus on what the agenda the boss has set mm -hmm. for the next four years. Then now, eventually, when the time comes, we can start listening to politics. But the deputy president started campaigning immediately. 
But let after me the 2017 in, let me jump elections. In there because um, we've always had that uh, accusation put against the DP yes. in the sense that he's busy going around campaigning, mm -hmm. he's busy making sure that his you know, base is ready for 2022. Yes. And every time he says, you know what, mm -hmm. I am the principal assistant, my job is to make sure my boss's <laughs> mandate is carried out. I, 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 go I around, want to give you specific examples. You remember there is a time actually when the president insisted that there is no more launching mm -hmm. of projects. projects. The president himself. Two days later, the deputy president was in central Kenya launching projects. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? This is somebody who has got no manners prim primarily, who, right. who, has, who has got no qualms at all defying the boss right. just for his own expediency. Right. That strategy cannot work. Right. Trust right. Yes. And uh, even as we say that, uh, mm -hmm. the same president who uh, you know, said there are no more launching of projects mm -hmm. is the same president who said, Uyum tuangu anatanga. That's where the phrase tanga tanga came from. Yes. Utamuono huko kwenu vito ngojini, tell him the problems. Yes. So is there double speak also coming from the top? You see, you see, one of the things that we must understand is that the marriage of a deputy president and, and, and the president mm. is, is unbreakable without breaking the presidency. Same with the governor and deputy governor mm. situation. Mm. Now, the only way... For, 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 for these two to survive is how they've survived the last two years. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens. On Sunday, uh, Uhuru will say something that we take to be a very negative thing against the deputy president. Mm -hmm. The next day on Monday, they're having lunch, right. right? So that is sort of, let me tell you, if seeing your father and mother eat lunch makes news in your family <laughs> that should tell you yes. how serious things are between them yes. and, and that's really how the president and the deputy president have to balance things out and if you listen to the deputy president and 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 you've correctly correctly pointed it out when he speaks he says i am launching development projects mm -hmm. i'm not campaigning mm -hmm. the reason for that is is he is he is campaigning but he needs to find a moniker under which to hide for right. him to continue campaigning Campaigning. Mm -hmm. That is why it's, if you listen to his rallies, it's almost like there's a, a, a diametric difference between him and his lieutenants. So his mm -hmm. lieutenants will go hard on Raila, mm -hmm. they will go hard on BBI, they will go hard on whatever it is that they want to do. The deputy president mm -hmm. always comes up and speaks on a more balanced tone. Mm -hmm. That's because he's trying to toe the line between what the president said and what he wants. Now, here's, here's the trick. The trick is this. If you're going to openly defy your senior, you must find a reason for which the public will support you. Right. Hence, the title, Hustler versus Dynasty. Mm. Which has also been addressed. Yes. Which has been... Yeah. Which you're trying to hide and uh -huh. say that those trying to stop me are trying to stop every hustler mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That gives you a basis. Mm -hmm. But you see, here is the problem. When you try to fight BBI and you don't know what is in it, all you're doing is you're giving the writers of BBI yes. ammunition of writing right. things you cannot fight against. Right. And I can bet my top dollar and my bottom dollar that what they will do is they will make sure that BBI will be more Punguza Mzigo than, more Pung than Punguza Mzigo. It will be more inclusive than any other document you are. <laughs> so that now if you stand to defy it, yes. you will come out looking as anti-pro-corruption, -pro right. you'll come out anti-unity, right. and you look like you don't like Punguza Mzigo. So they will have to change that tune very soon. And I like what you've just brought up right there, because that was something also subject of the utterances the president made yes. Bonamundo, in terms of um, the dynasties versus the hustlers. Yes. And the president came out and said it has nothing to do with dynasties. Yes. Um, if you have, uh, if you want to serve the country mm -hmm. in terms of leadership, yes. that's what it's all about. Not where you're from, not your tribe, not your color. Absolutely. And yeah. he says this, and that was a really big fundamental point that the hustler nation was using. You know, uh, Jeff, you have to agree. Um, the deputy president's campaign has been premised on two uh, fallacies. Mm -hmm. First, uh, he calls himself the hustler. Right. Ruto is not a hustler. He said he didn't have shoes until the 90s. No, all of us actually. Mm -hmm. In fact, almost everybody, including Mzee mm -hmm. Jomo Kenyatta, Daniel Moy, Mzee Kibaki. Kibaki went to funny schools and he became... So, that is nothing. Uh, Right now, actually, because this narrative began a few years ago, b b uh, insisting that he's a hustler is, is, a, is, a, is a lie because it does not represent anything around hustling, except if he wants to use the, uh, the colloquial meaning of mm -hmm. uh, hustling. Uh, secondly, <laughs> because that, th there is that particular. That's really uh, clear. <laughs> <laughs> secondly, uh, his, his campaign has been about dynasties versus um, hustlers. Uh, hustlers. 
Now, look at the history of the deputy president. Um, in 1992, when the whole country was at the heart of the clamor for multi-party democracy and actually trying to build a narrative for the common man, uh, the deputy president was working with the dynasties. In 1997, the, the Ruta was working in the dynasties. In 2002, when actually the entire nation coalesced around the removal of Kano from power, Deputy President was working with uh, Daniel Moy to retain uh, power through Uru Kenyatta. Uh, come 2005, come 2007, come 2013. So uh, it's a hoax. Ruto is not a hustler. Right. Yeah. He only now identifies the dynasties when he thinks it is convenient for him. Uh -huh. It is a lie. Right. So uh, basing a campaign on those two lies is actually what the president was calling out last week on Thursday mm -hmm. uh, during the, um, the memorial because they have worked together for a very long time, right. the two of them. Right. And they didn't start 2013. So in my view, and I think that was an interesting twist into the debate because for the last seven years, when Deputy President William Ruto has been on that campaign trail, he has never told us anything specific that he's achieving or not achieving. He has never been able to address to this country uh, the economic mess that the, this administration has put this country into. Mm -hmm. He has never been able to address uh, the, you know, in his own words, I want to quote him because I was there when the Jubilee Manifesto was launched in Kasarani in 2013. Um, in his own words, the deputy president insisted that we are going to have affordable power in this country. Today we have capital flight from this country because mm -hmm. manufacturers, which is one of the big four agenda, cannot afford power in this country compared to the neighboring countries. We, we, we have continued to see exorbitant and unnecessary investments in power to, at the expense of the common Mananchi. Uh, when we talk about food security, he was, he was on, he's on record insisting that the, no Kenyan will ever go hungry. In fact, he said Unga is going to become 60 bob. Today, Unga is not affordable. But also, ben, just a moment, no, no, just a moment. No, no, but even on yes, that, you yes. know, because they always say at the end of the day, we are the backstop. Yes. He's, he's there. He, I mean, but, he's, but he, he has he, never he, come out or come back to us and told us, you know what, guys, I really imagined and I really hoped that this would work. Right. It is not working with my current principle. I'm calling it out so that I can come back to you, give me mm -hmm. a fresh mandate so that I can be able to deliver this. Right. Right. So, right. Ran, running on these two narratives has been escapist, in my view. Okay, yes, trying to run away from the uh, reality. Okay. Okay. One yes. of the things that, that, that um, any Kenyan should ask is what is the promise for anyone's run? You, you cannot be campaigning when you're supposed to be doing a job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's, it's, like, it's like you sitting there and say, the day I become a news anchor at K24 yes. and host my own show, mm -hmm. that show will be amazing. I'm right. telling you. And you're sitting on the anchor's table. Yeah. And that's, that's the question that he's raising. And it's a valid question. It does not make sense how sitting leaders are campaigning. Right. Because ideally what should be happening is they should be doing. So the, all they should be telling us is, listen, look at what we have done. 2022, we will continue what we are doing. Right. So you cannot separate what you are doing now mm -hmm. and your run from 2022. You cannot. And that's yes. very critical to underscore for the country to understand. And this is not about being against someone's run. Mm -hmm. It's about correcting our politics. Mm -hmm. Because as it stands today, the way this campaign is being run for 2022... Mm -hmm. It's almost as if there's a prince. And this prince yes. was promised a throne 10 years ago. Right. 10 for Uru, 10 for him. Yes. Now, he's running on that principle that now it is almost his birthright. Mm -hmm. So now this is Prince Charles and Prince Harry having a fight in the house because <laughs> one wants to usurp the throne. That is not how it's supposed to be. Right. What we need to be convinced of as a country is what do we want for the future of the country. Now, and ironically enough, the BBI nine-point agenda addresses the hopes and dreams of this country. Mm -hmm. As in, I keep asking, what is this we are against with at right. BBI? The fight against corruption? Is that what we are against? Mm -hmm. Uniting the country? Is that what we are against? Having a national ethos and a national discourse? Is that what we are against? Uh, solving our historical dispute? Is that what we are against? So when you say you are against BBI, what, what exactly, exactly is, it? is it? And that's the problem that we have. What we are trying to, to run away from is unfortunately where this has narrative is taking us back to it's taking us back to an issue based politics it's taking us back to a politics that does not deal with the issues of this country but for for the deputy president there is a lot of time for him to change his tack and change his strategy okay. and the strategy is very simple joe biden 
Okay? Mm -hmm. Listen, all Joe Biden needs to do to campaign in the United States today is everywhere he goes, he goes and he says, my good friend, Barack Obama. My good friend, Barack Obama. Meaning that what Barack Obama did is exactly what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will deliver what Barack Obama did. And that has given him top billing in the running for 2020. Mm -hmm. And that's where the deputy president, in my view, needs to find his strategy. He needs to find his strategy mm -hmm. in the strength of Huru Kenyatta. Let me tell you, the best campaign platform for 2022 for anybody is making sure Uhuru has a legacy. Absolutely. And so that's, that's what he should do. That's what he should do. Yeah. 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 Not, okay. Let me tell you, Ngong Road is being built. Okay, and There's we'll have to move on from this. Road. Road. <laughs> we can go on on this one <laughs> until 2022. <laughs> yes. We went on this one. Uh, because we need to move uh, on, uh, writer. Please keep your tweets coming in, by the way. We'll be sampling some of those uh -huh. at K2040. If you have to look at the big stories of the day, yes. one of the biggest stories, of course, uh, over the weekend is the National uh, you know, Housing and Population Census. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, have you been counted, by the way? Some people are saying, oh. I've been waiting for them. They haven't yet gone into my house. Up at my house last night. Last night, yeah. uh, Bonamulwa? Not yet. Not yet. I have not uh, okay. come across. Neither here place. as well. But even yes. as we wait for the numerators to come to our households, yes. mm. some questions coming up, of course, uh, concerning the costs. Uh, you know, compared to the last time this was done. Yeah. Also, uh, the big question there in terms of identity: mm -hmm. Are we being counted? Are we being identified? Because that's another question that uh, the government spokesman saying Actually, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Give your ID number. Yes, give your passport yes. number. Mm -hmm. But international norms. I mean, just as long as I can no. say yes or no, if yeah. you have the document yeah, or not, yeah. Bonamulwa. Um, it is unfortunate that uh, we still have individuals in the year 2019 mm -hmm. who cannot understand what enumeration entails mm -hmm. or what counting entails. Right. Counting is when I walk into my uh, cow yard and count the number of bulls I have, one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. I count the number of cows I have, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the chicken. They don't need to identify themselves. I don't need now to start putting down that we have a red chicken and a, and a, and a, blue one. And a checkered one and a, <laughs> and a gray one. You know, uh, it is a bit unfortunate right. because uh, the communication from the government spokesman uh, reeks of impunity, whereby uh, it is against the provisions of the statistics law in this mm -hmm. country. And that is very wanting because when they start even asking people about Uduma number, right. what has Uduma number got to do with census? Yeah. Uh -huh. What has Uduma number got to do with a, a population? census. In fact, I would have expected the designers or the drafters of that questionnaire to start asking Kenyans, uh, when was the last time you visited a public hospital? How were the services there? Right. Right. When was the last time you used a, uh, you visited a police station? Right. Uh, how are you treated in that particular police station? Because those are the planning issues they need okay. to be talking about. Okay. Asking me about my ID number and, um, and my passport number and my Huduma number, what has that got to do with anything? Okay, but I'm going to hold on to that one because yes. we'll be jumping into that a bit. We have to take a break right now, of mm -hmm. course, but it does continue. We'll be getting Mark's views on this as well. We'll also be joined by Dennis Dumbia as we jump into this matter, of course. The sense is still going on up until uh, August 31st, but how it's being done, the modality of it are uh, also being a sticky issue right there. That and plenty more of this continue with our new super review right here on K24 this morning. We'll be right back after this break.